Welcome to the Terrible Podcast with your host from SteelersDepot.com, where you can find all your latest and greatest Steelers news. It's Dave Bryan and Alex Kazora, always lit, talking Steelers. And now, here's Dave and Alex. Welcome to the Terrible Podcast, Season 12, Episode 61. He's Dave Bryan. I'm Alex Kazura, SteelersDepot.com. Thanks for being back with us here on this Friday show. Unfortunately, Dave, not talking about a victory Friday, talking about the defeat of Friday and what a game it was. And, and the subject of my terrible take today is, and we'll discuss it here, obviously, it feels like we say virtually the same thing about the Steelers every single week, win or loss, and this time uh, a loss, obviously. Um, it just feels like the same script. It's a it's a very strange feeling to, to, to basically talk about the same pros and cons of this team week after week. Yeah, absolutely, and happy Friday to the listeners. And uh, it, it feel, we, we better get busy because it seems like every week now we have two games to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> and certainly got uh, certainly feel felt that way uh, last night. I, I got I got to admit, uh, you know, going into the second half, I wasn't sure we were going to get that second game uh, this week. That's how bad the first game that the Steelers played in the first half uh, was there. But I mean. I don't know. The thought that keeps running through my head is that is that Simpsons clip of uh, uh, congratulations, you tried and taking the cake over and throwing it in the trash can because mm-hmm. okay, I mean you you battled back, congratulations, uh, uh, but. You, you still lost the game and you lost the game primarily because of the way you played in the, in, in, you know, in, in the first half of this one. And, uh, I, I found myself too, and, 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 I'm, and I'm already going down rabbit holes here, but, uh, uh, you know, it felt like watching a Rocky movie at, at, at some point there. You just, you, you want Ben, stay down, Ben, stay down. Mm-hmm. Don't, don't get up. You know, but he gets up and, and when he does get get up, he, he, he fights back. And uh, I tell you, my one takeaway before we start getting into this thing is you can blame a, uh, you can point the fingers a lot of different ways uh, for, for, for this loss for the Steelers on Thursday night uh, to the Vikings. But uh, I, I, nobody really should be pointing that finger. I don't think at Ben Roethlisberger in this one. I would hope not. He was excellent. And I think you see the national media that has buried a guy like Ben. And certainly we've been critical of him at times, but not nearly his blanket statement. The guy's cooked the way that a lot of the national media has. But he's been excellent in, in some key moments. And Thursday night was was one of a, one of them. So to, to recap the, the game here. Hey, he was getting blasted. Oh, my God. Too. Horrible. It's like I the mean, Rangers game. Yeah, it. I mean, it. It really was him a couple times where I thought, "Oh man, Ben, just stay down. You don't. You don't. You don't need to take this kind of kind of abuse right here." I mean, he was getting jacked up uh, uh, in that game. So props to him to getting up off the mat. Uh, have at have, have, have at it, Alex. So Minnesota wins this game, thirty-six to twenty-eight. Pittsburgh digs themselves a twenty-nine nothing hole late in the third quarter and begin a furious comeback with about two minutes left in the third quarter to at one point make it a thirty-six twenty-eight one possession game, and it comes down to the final play. So for consecutive weeks, the Vikings game comes down to the final play of the game. They lose against the Lions, and they they hold on to beat the Steelers as. Ben Roethlisberger's perfect throw to Pat Frymuth in triple coverage, but a really good throw um, is, is incomplete, and, and Frymuth does not drop many. He dropped that one, but uh, that would have been obviously a very difficult play to make. So it came down to literally the final play of the game in this one. Before we talk about the lost Dave and exactly what all transpired, let's just talk about briefly some housekeeping related things. The Steelers made a couple of roster moves on, I think it was Wednesday, um, signing punter Drew Chrisman and long snapper Rex Sanhara to the practice squad. And those seem to be COVID insurance type moves. They've already have, they've already added a kicker to the practice squad in Sam Sloman. So they have backup specialists across the board. So that tells me they're just there for COVID insurance as you hit the winter months and the positive tests here with this team. I uh, like Chrisman coming out of Ohio state, my number one punter, but uh, hopefully we won't see him. Although with the way Presley Harvard is punting, I guess who the heck knows at this point. 
uh, inactives for uh, the, the Steelers game here. The two surprise, the two healthy scratches, I should say, were running back Anthony McFarland and defensive tackle Carlos Davis. So those guys struggling to get a hat here uh, this season, especially Davis as he's come back off of IR, but yet to dress with the Steelers. Yeah, and 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 as expected, the uh, they had two elevations uh, earlier on Thursday in uh, Rashad Coward and Chaz, Chaz Green, and both those uh, guys dressed uh, to give the team eight offensive linemen dressed in that game there. So uh, really, and I, and I think uh, you look back, I think the inactive list was the same as the week before, right? Uh, or, 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 or pretty close to it, right? Because uh, uh, McFarland did not dress the previous week. Uh, or I, I guess it was different because of the fact that Finney uh, had played the previous mm-hmm. week and, and Finney was out this week. So not really surprising when we got uh, through all the pregame uh, minutia and, 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 and uh, in, you know past the uh, inactive list there. Everything kind of went as planned, yeah. I think overall coward did play some snaps in this game there was some sort of rotation happening at left guard between him and john leglu i couldn't get a good grasp for what the plane was if leglu was hurt or they were literally doing a true rotation but uh, we'll have to look at that on the tape so coward did play some snaps at left guard for pittsburgh all right dave let's get into this whatever you want to call it game again pittsburgh losing 36 28 to the vikings down 29 nothing and their furious comeback falls short and Again, it's the same script. Dig yourself a trench. Try to dig yourself out of it. Run defense bad. Ben playing well. Running the ball was meh, better in the second half. I mean, again, it it feels like a lot of the things we say every single week. Yeah, absolutely. I don't know where you want to start. I mean, it it really felt when the game got to about nine – uh, uh, nine nothing there. It, it really felt fortunate for the Steelers to only be in that hole. They came out first to the Vikings. Came out first couple of plays throwing right at, uh, at right to Justin Jefferson on some uh just get him in the groove type routes. Uh, make some catches, get a first down there. I think one of those was a wide receiver screen. The other one was was was, was a quick out in front of uh, uh Witherspoon there. And uh, then they started uh running the football and and the tape said. Uh, going into this, that it was uh, it was going to be a ham game, <laughs> and uh, they're probably going to use a lot of heavy in this one with with with, with fullback CJ Ham. Uh, we saw that early, and boy, the Steelers made made it a lot easier on them on, on top of that because they were just man, I, there's some going to be some awful uh, early. Uh, non-fits, if you will, uh, on the all-22 tape because there were just monster holes mm-hmm. uh, that, that that Dalvin Cook was, was running through. And what, they had like two explosive run plays right off the bat there. And you know how I feel about that. I mean, anytime a team uh, uh, hits you for an explosive running play, that's stealing. Well, they had, uh, they had two right off the bat there. And uh, the explosive plays just kept on uh, coming overall. So I, I, you know, I I think the team was fortunate on that first drive. I think uh, Witherspoon got uh, what that uh, third down tackle mm-hmm. there uh, to, to get the team off the field to force the field goal uh, attempt. Uh, it was missed. And you figure, okay, dodge bullet there, get this thing straight. Well, they continued to just take the gun and shoot themselves in the foot, especially on a defensive side of football against the run. And I, I didn't know who was going to hit 200 yards first, Alex, Dalvin Cook or or or, 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 or Justin Jefferson there. And uh, it obviously ended up being Cook who, who had a big game in this one, but it could have been a much bigger game uh, for, for, for Justin Jefferson had, mm-hmm. had he caught a couple other passes in this one. It, yeah, the, the, their stars got to play like stars, and rarely did the Steelers do that. Uh, we'll talk about that, you know, throughout the, the rest of this podcast. 205 yards officially for Dalvin Cook, two touchdowns, his first carry of the game, went for 20 yards, and that kind of was the omen of the day. Uh, the shoulder you know, injury he was dealing with, not a concern when you're running free for the first 15, 20 yards. You're right. I mean, the, the, the run fits were non-existent. They weren't run fits. They were the opposite of it, whatever that's called, um, and it's just really bad. I mean, it's as bad as it's been because at least in, in games past, the holes weren't quite as semi-truck wide and, 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 and maybe they were just missed tackles or, you know, guy that just, just couldn't get off a block or something like that. I mean, it, Cook just has just just wide open lanes. I mean, just incredible. So we'll have to look at what happened on that one, but it's, it's, it's hard to even look at it and, and believe that's an NFL defense 
trying to play defense out there. Right. And, you know, fortunately, the tackling, I think, was OK once it got into the secondary. Yeah, but thank you, you Minka, for saving like <laughs> yeah. five touchdowns. In this game. You, you don't want you. You know, that that's that's one of the things where you look at a box score uh, and, and you try to decipher what happened in a game in a box or box score. You don't want those safeties to be up there having to make a lot of tackles and, and, and that kind of thing. Now, I think Devin Bush technically uh, led the Steelers in, 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 in total tackles. I think he had eight, but I think five of those were were of the uh, assisted variety there. There. But uh, uh, believe it or not, uh, this might be a stat of the weird for you. Uh, the Vikings only had five explosive plays in this game, and it felt like they had like uh, 15 of them, yeah. to be quite honest with you. And uh, four of those five came in the first two qu- you know, in the first half, first two quarters there. And then uh, they obviously had the uh, uh, the the one in the fourth fourth quarter that you know, I you know, I guess lack of a better word ended up being the dagger there's so many daggers in this game though but uh uh the uh the the deep pass to Osborne for 62 yards triple explosive and you know you know you say about those it's bad enough that you give up the triple explosive plays but when they end up in the end zone it's just even might as well count it a quadruple explosive mm-hmm. play at that point uh there so uh and another kind of stat of the weird for you not really I'm just trying to pretend like I'm 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 I'm, I'm I'm contributing here uh, to to your great column there, but uh, uh, Kirk Cousins only completed 14 passes in this game, and it felt like Kirk Cousins completed like 24 passes uh, in this game. Now, obviously, a couple of a couple of the other ones, you know, deep one early to uh, to Jefferson in the end zone could have very easily been been a touchdown. There was another one I think in the end zone. Just there were a couple just misses that uh, uh, that there should have been for Cousins. But I think when you go back through this, I, I was uh, I be honest with you, I was a bit shocked when I went back through and said, man, he only completed 14 passes in this game uh, because we you know, I I can rattled off the first four or five, six of them easily uh, to you. And then obviously uh, 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 the, the, the couple of touchdowns on top of it. So, uh, yeah, tale of two halves uh, for sure here. And as you stated, you just can't, cannot continuously dig yourself down this big a hole at halftime and then expect to come back. And and the Vikings did play a little bit of part in this because they said, you know what? We got a big lead. We're going to play cover two in this. We're not going to give up the big play. Uh, chip away, uh, uh, if you will. And the Steelers did, to their credit. But they just got far too far behind. They, they, they just couldn't overcome it. Yeah, the Steelers fought. Credit to them. They did improve. But at this stage of the season in week 14 with playoffs really kind of coming into focus, fighting and the moral victory of it doesn't matter. It's about winning and losing. And that's what defines your season. And Steelers on the wrong side of this one. Davin Cook most rushing yards in a game by one player against Pittsburgh since Fred Taylor at 234 Mm -hmm. in 2000. Taylor holds the record. Cook third most yards ever run against Pittsburgh, Minnesota running for 242 on the night and so the run defense just to kind of bring it back to that briefly it's just bad and it's going to stay bad and it may occasionally ebb and flow and hopefully they won't give up 242 every single week although we'll see what happens against the titans uh you know in in week 15 uh but it's just a historically bad steelers run defense and i just don't really see how it's going to get better because they've tried some things there's probably more things to try but i'm not going to pretend like this run defense is going to do be anything you know, remotely resembling stout the rest of the way. And and, and that's how this team is built. It's supposed to, so to, they're supposed to stop the run and they cannot stop the run. Uh, the last six games, net yards rushing, it's over 1,000. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to I'm trying to talk your yeah, language. I wouldn't there, be but, surprised uh, if it was over nine thousand. I, I yeah, I wouldn't be shocked if it, if it. But but yeah, I mean, it, 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 it's that bad yeah. right now. And I mean, I I, I haven't even. Uh, I don't even have the stomach to get into run success rates there and, and how many uh, we already talked a couple of weeks ago or a week ago about the uh, the the uh, the explosive runs that this team is giving up. And once again, it's one thing for a defense to give up explosive plays and especially through the passing game. 
but when you give them up on the ground the way the Steelers are doing, I mean, it's just it, it, it's just really crippling because that at that point you're so concerned about the run that it that it has no choice but to probably open up uh, the passing game in 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 some degree to this. I mean, we had this team even on uh, you know one of these explosive runs was obviously uh, uh, won by by Cook on uh, that ended up in in the end zone on a touchdown, and those guys are so concerned about trying to stop the run that they're all jumping inside and nobody's nobody's uh uh you know protecting the edge and all like that and that's exactly what happened in in in, in that situation there uh you just cannot continue continue you know continually do that kind of stuff and it's just it's not going to think that it's magically going to get better right now it's just kind of foolish if you ask me I agree. Um, yeah, the run fits were bad. That one, the quick bounce to the right side. I mean, there are probably multiple issues on that play, but Terrell Edmonds jumps so far inside, and I have no idea why he's the edge defender on that play. I mean, we Watt and Killebrew shoot, are shooting their gaps. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So, yeah. I yeah, so, what... some, some, some got uh, uh, pushed inside. Some, some, some went inside by their own doing. Some went inside by not by their own doing. Uh, right. uh, that's how dominant. Uh, you know the Vikings were uh, at least initially in this thing. Every you know you f- this thing got got off track so early that you end up having players trying to do what too much mm-hmm. and not worry about their own job. And we'll, I'm sure we'll hear Keith Butler go over this later on in uh, uh, next week. Here is the fact that uh, you know too many people trying to do too many things and not do their job, and that's when you have this thing fall apart. But I mean, it, it was it was more than just that early in this thing, especially with, with, I mean, people getting the wrong calls or something or somebody. And it's so hard. There's so much wrong early in this thing. It's hard to decipher on the TV tape. Yeah. And, and it's going to be interesting to see what, what's going to happen here uh, uh, in the next, you know, we'll obviously have the, hopefully the all 22 tape in the next three or four hours here and all, but it's going to be a mess trying to, uh, 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 to decipher some of these fails early. Yeah, it is going to be difficult. I know in one instance, Pittsburgh was in dime on second down, and I don't know exactly the personal grouping that Minnesota had. They were spreading the field, but you know, you take a linebacker off the field and ended up being a wide open lane for cook. But when, even when there were multiple linebackers on the field, there were still wide open lanes for Dalvin cook. And so Pittsburgh played a lot of people in this one. I know that Buddy Johnson got his first defensive snaps of the season. Same with Marcus Allen. Allen working in dime packages. Spillane had previously occupied that role, but with him still out with that knee injury, I guess they wanted to turn to somebody else. And so Mike Tomlin said, you know, they'll they'll overturn any any stone, and it really hasn't worked. Um, I do wonder why Carlos Davis can't get a hat. Not that he's going to solve all the problems, but for a guy that you know is was a part of your your team there to start the season, a, a, an athletic. Uh, penetrating defensive tackle. I don't understand why they can't uh, try him because it would seem like if you're just exploring all options, why not go with a guy that was part of your game plan, part of your rotation to begin the season? Look, uh, apologies to uh, Henry Mondo's family if they're listening. Uh, uh, but I mean, this this guy is is you know he's a practice squad guy is what he mm-hmm. is at this point. I mean, he, he is a guy uh, bottom of the barrel uh, uh, you know kind of player at this point and. Uh, high effort guy, but he just he does not have what it takes. I'm not saying Carlos Davis has what it takes. Obviously, uh, Bugs seemed to get himself in some sort of doghouse uh, early in this thing. Look, you got two Davises over there, right? Uh, right. At, yeah. at, at, at this point, not just Carlos, but uh, Khalil as well too. Hey, what do you have to lose? Put one of those guys in in, in the helmet right now, and you can't. You know, uh, Montrevious Adams, uh, obviously coming off the practice squad of, of, of another team, that kind of lets you know what. You know, he's got a great get off, but I mean, just merely penetrating a gap every other play is not going to be enough at times. Right. And you know, teams are are I I think already you know, learning a little bit off of his tape from from a week ago there. So yeah, you you. At this point, what do you have to lose other than you know uh, than more games than than trying to get guys such as uh, one of those Davis uh, twins I- I- in a helmet? At this point, at least you get a good idea of what those guys can do going into the off season and all. And uh, look, I think Carlos Davis in the very minimum amount of snaps 
the, the true regular season snaps that he's played, uh, it hasn't been bad at all. You go back to that Cowboys game uh, uh, last year during his rookie season, and uh, Khalil, he you know he's got some decent tape at least uh, uh, so in his limited playing time as well too. So yeah, I'm I'm with you at this point. I don't understand why Mondo is your guy other than maybe those other guys just not showing you that they understand the defense well enough. Yeah, I mean I'm sure Mondo. He, he seems like a smart guy. He's versatile. He can play all three spots, although playing no stack was very questionable, but he, he literally has played it before. And I'm not trying to throw barbs at any one particular guy on Thursday. They were all bad. When you give up 242 on the ground, they're all bad. I'm not even saying that Davis should start over Adams or anything like that, but just to try someone different, someone that can play up and down the line, someone that can be a sub-package pass rusher. I don't know if Davis is even particularly great against the run, but I'm willing to give it a shot because the guys they currently have as you said, Mundo especially, have not been good against the run. So it's just kind of weird the idea of overturn every stone. We'll play multiple linebackers, but we won't try a defensive lineman who has played for this team before and was part of this team's plan uh, plans. It, it's very curious to me. Right. So that was one element of it, the, the, the poor run defense overall, and things did clean up in the second half. But, but that's the frustration is that there was so much popcorn, whether you're talking this game, whether you're talking – uh, Seattle game in the second half of that one. Other games were just there are you know quarters and halves of the game where it's bad and it does get cleaned up. And so you sit there and wonder why, why, why did it take this team so long to adjust to the issues that they were having? Why were they incapable of doing it for large stretches of the time? And so that that's the frustrating and just frankly confusing part of it because they played better run defense towards the end of the game. Maybe that was because it was more predictable what Minnesota was doing or what, but. Um, you know, you, you did kind of lock things down, um, to, to relatively speaking, at least. And, and, and so you wonder why those issues weren't, uh, you know, corrected and, and created and prevented earlier in the game. Well, look, you, you see other teams come out right away and be able to attack the Steelers defensively and kind of know what they're, what they're going to do, what they're going to be in, uh, and, that, that's how they're jumping out to these big leads. The Steelers on the other side, <laughs> they, 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 you know, what, what do they try to do? They try to run, you know, the screen game. They try to run uh, uh, just their typical counter and, 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 and powers up the middle. And then they try to the, the, the deep shot down the sideline there. And then they, you know, they, 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 they don't score any points and then end up punting four or five times in, in the game and then they get themselves in this huge hole and then they start opening it up a little bit. Uh, uh, and I think, uh, you know, we say that this team makes – makes you know some changes in 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 the second half and why don't they play in the first half like they do in the second half well a lot what the defense does on the other side kind of dictates ends up what what's happening too and and i think Najee harris put this uh 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 the best after the game last night was you know the the vikings started playing more cover too and they just said okay you want to run go ahead and run Mm -hmm. and that's when the Steelers' running game obviously started to come alive and uh, started to make some ground that way. Now, now to the credit, Ben did make some extremely great throws uh, uh, during the second half. And on the throws that his throws weren't great, uh, you had people starting to step up and make some contested catches. Yeah, I, I think it kind of started with James Washington uh, have you know kind, kind of spearheading that thing. Uh, uh, a couple of great contested catches by him. Chase Claypool for his bad a game overall, and we boy we got plenty to talk about him uh, as we go through this thing. Uh, he did make a couple of catches in this game. Uh, Deontay Johnson, uh, he, even though he let another one in the end zone slip through his hands, uh, uh, you know made a couple of key grabs and and made a couple of people miss and got out of bounds so uh the effort was there uh uh you know definitely in the second half from these wide receivers but i it makes you wonder how much of this outside of maybe a handful about four or five plays is a result of the vikings just saying just don't beat us deep in one play yeah, that's probably part of it, although Pittsburgh did get their chunk plays. They did win deep in the second half of this one, and guys won you know, one-on-one contested battles. You know, Johnson, Claypool, and Washington all did that, so so credit there for, for, for Pittsburgh making plays. But, um, yeah, it just it's a team that if they can only play the second half of games, they'd be pretty good, but they're going to play a full 60 minutes, and they've rarely done that this entire season. Well, what's the score differential for them in, in, in the second half of games this season? 
That's a good question. I know in the first half of their last four games, they're being outscored 78 to 16. So that's a differential of 62. So they're minus 62 in the first half for their last four. Um, they're probably plus 62 in the first or in the second half for their last four, it feels like. Right. Um, I mean, it's, just, it's, 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 it's a huge disparity. And once again, I, I guess it goes back to kind of what you were trying to say there. Why, why, uh, what, why can't this team get this kind of stuff done? Uh, earlier in games. And look, it, it's not just this season. It goes back for how, how many years now that you see this team just be so, such slow starters, you know? Yeah, I, I do think it's been better this year overall compared to where it's been, but it's not been necessarily good enough. Right. And sometimes they're decent to start. You know, the Seattle game, really good in the first half. Third quarter, they fall apart. So sometimes it's like second half adjustments as well. Um you know, Detroit game was first half kind of stuff. You clean things up in the second half. Same story on Thursday. I want to talk about the Steelers' defensive game plan there from a coverage standpoint. We knew that Adam Thielen was out for Minnesota, their number two weapon. Um, Justin Jefferson, they're still their top receiver. And so typically Pittsburgh has done a great job taking away and subduing those top weapons, Stephon Diggs, Devontae Adams, Darren Waller, et cetera, usually by doubling and bracketing that top guy. Not the case tonight, as or, or last night, I should say. Justin Jefferson had a strong game, could have had a better game, as you said. Seven catches, 79 yards, and a touchdown. A lot of that damage coming in the first half of that game. And so that was a very curious decision on Pittsburgh's part to play a lot of just straight-up man coverage. And they lost on crosses repeatedly in this game with cornerbacks being out leveraged and simply not athletic or talented enough to run with a really top-level guy like Jefferson. So I think from a execution standpoint, they were poor. From a game plan standpoint, the Steelers plan was poor. Yeah, I really expected them to to uh, uh, to to kind of look into the crystal ball crystal ball and see that Adam Thielen was not playing in this game. That uh, you, that you treat uh, you give Justin Jefferson the respect he deserves, and you 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 you. You know, do like you did against the Raiders, against the Packers, and against you know a few other teams this season. You make sure that you take away that guy uh, that that uh, more most likely to beat you with a lot of bracket kind of stuff, and uh, you just didn't really see that overall, especially not early in this one. And then uh, credit once again to uh, to the K- K- Kubiak kid. Uh, in, in, in picking this stuff out early here and sending some crossers, putting a guy like Mika in a huge, huge bind. You know, when you had those, and it, it wasn't kind of a complete Yankee kind of concept there, but it was it was kind of close enough where you had those yeah. guys crossing at, uh, I don't know, 18 yards down the field there. And if you have a quarterback just staring at the safety in the process and you're not getting pressure on the quarterback uh, in, uh, in, in the process there, then, you know, how are you going to put that on a safety like, like Mickey? You basically got to choose which way you're going to go. Now, I, you know, uh, I think I'd been more apt, though, to, uh, to, to, to choose uh, 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 Jefferson as the one to run with. But, you know, you, 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 you pick what you – Whichever side you pick, probably Cousins is probably going to go the other yeah. way in that anyway there. I so. think Cousins had looked off Minka, looked left, and then came back to his right. Okay. So. Well, I, I haven't seen really a good shot of the all 22 on that yet, but I mean, it wouldn't be surprised because that's what good quarterbacks do. Right. So, yeah, it's a real bind to be in. And that was, and that happened over and over again. That was not the only instance of it. There was, it wasn't a, a cross or Yankee concept, but a third down play. Justin Lane, one-on-one with Jefferson, had an up and I think, for some pressure that led to a slightly inaccurate throw. Jefferson would have had his second touchdown of the game. So it was a lot of singled-up moments. They did do some bracket stuff in the second half. There was one player, remember, the Dalvin Cook third down, 17-yard catch. They bracketed Jefferson on that play, forced Cousins to come off of Jefferson and find Cook and made a great throw and catch on that side. So they kind of got the message in the second half. And I understand you can't bracket and double a guy in every single conceivable Not every play, no. Um, And usually Pittsburgh's done that in some of the bigger third down and the game type stuff. But still, you knew he was a top guy. And Pittsburgh did a poor job of minimizing his impact uh, the way they did a good job of minimizing the impact of Adams and Diggs and the guys I mentioned before. Right. You just, you you had to go into this thing with a pretty good idea that, that Thielen's not playing. And... Uh, even if Thielen plays in this one, the way you know, the, uh, he's probably not going to be 100%. So you know, you at that point you say let that guy kill you, or let Osborne kill you, or let D.D. Westbrook uh, 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 kill you along those lines there. And 
yeah, once again, like I said, you, you, you early in the first quarter of this thing, I was kind of wondering which one of those guys was going to get to 200 yards first, right. Cook or – and then, you know, you throw one on top of it, you can't stop the run, and you, you, you weren't getting any – any. I think there was one play with, 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 with T.J. Watt off the, off the edge that, that got good pressure and forced a uh, – uh, uh, you know, forced an incomplete throw there. But other than that uh, – you know they weren't able to get consistent pressure on him, and 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 that's partly because the Vikings' offense was able to do what? Stay ahead of the chains. And whenever you have uh, success like they had on first down against the Steelers, and heck, they didn't face too many third downs, I don't think, uh, in, in in the first half of that game. Uh, you keep opposing defenses off balance there, and especially one that's smarting, saying, "Man, I, I just I got to respect the run. I got to respect the run. I can't get upfield uh, uh, because we're getting." gashed here that slows you down on top of it so just a culmination uh, effect on this and oh yeah you did lose uh, TJ Watt before halftime uh, on uh, in this one and not too terribly long after that uh, you lost you lost your other outside linebacker too so then you're playing with with Derek Tuska and and uh, uh, Taco Charlton as, as your guys and I mean, it's amazing that they didn't continue to get beat up as bad as they got beat up in the second half uh, as they did in the first half. Yeah, I apologize. I should have mentioned the injuries top of the show. TJ Watt exiting with a groin injury. Alex Highsmith with a quad. I know there was a report from me in that report today that you had written about, Dave, that said Watt will get more tests on that groin. It's unclear the severity of it. Highsmith's quad injury seems to be minor. His dad had tweeted out last night it was just a bad bruise. And so with 10 days before the Titans game, I would fully expect Highsmith to play against Tennessee. We'll see on TJ Watts. You're right. His team was down to just two outside linebackers, just just Derek Tuska and, and Taco Charlton to basically play the whole second half um, of that game. And so those guys get tired for sure. Their impact, obviously not what TJ Watt and Alex Highsmith are capable of doing. And so the, the pass rush you know, impact in this game overall was not quite as bad as the Bengals game, but in that same vein of, of just not really being there. And once again, Mike Tomlin pointed to uh, really like he did in that game against the Bengals after the game, saying you know, you just you get beat up in in the trenches there, losing both sides of the football there, and those kind of things end up being what 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 gets you beat there. Yep. And you had guys coming free run. You had miscommunication all, all over the place in that first half uh, by that offensive line. Uh, maybe that's what got John LeGlue yanked for a little bit. I mean, it was a bit curious, unless it's injury, injury related, why Coward was shuffled into that game uh, oh, 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 over LeGlue, uh, especially what, three series in, four series in, something along those lines there. Uh, but. Uh, I mean, at, at, at one point, you have three offensive linemen blocking one Vikings guy in the middle while, while a couple other guys run <laughs> run, run clean. And here's here's the other thing, and I, and I, I think I put this in uh, either my five keys or on Twitter before the game. This Vikings defensive front was missing some players, right? You know, uh, obviously missing uh, uh, Everson Griffin. Who else were they missing? Uh, Daniel Hunter's out for the season. Yeah. Right, uh, Hunter, Hunter out for the season. You had to know, and 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 this isn't Mike Zimmer. Wasn't Mike Zimmer's first rodeo playing up uh, uh, against Ben Roethlisberger? He still is a very good defensive-minded uh, 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 coach for sure, and he's played eno uh, enough against Roethlisberger, and he's seen what Roethlisberger is and isn't at this point. In other words. Uh, if you think you can get that pressure after Ben Roethlisberger, he's not the same Ben Roethlisberger that's probably going to extend the play on you like Zimmer has seen happen against his Bengals teams all those years. He's not going to be the the, the the type quarterback that just tosses defensive players off of him like he did several years ago. I had a feeling that we would see them dial up some, uh, some, some pressure uh, that – you know, a, a little bit heavier than what their M.O. is. And that's exactly what happened. They sugared up those A gaps quite a bit uh, in this one. And and the Steelers did not know how to handle it. They did not know on, on really any given step who was coming, who wasn't coming. And that played. And then when, when one would come free, uh, Najee going the wrong way, uh, at least on one of those. That's what you have happen. That's when, what you have uh, four sacks in the first half uh, there on Ben Roethlisberger, I believe. Uh, uh, the fifth one, I think, came about the 13-minute mark in the third quarter. Uh, after that, the play was fine, Mrs. Lincoln. But uh, uh, before that, he was, I mean, 
once again, it, it felt I I felt like saying, "Man, just stay down, Ben. Stay down. You know, you don't you don't you don't deserve this." And uh, that pressure early in that game prevented the Steelers from doing a lot of stuff. Five sacks for Big Ben. First time he's been sacked five times in the game since 2014. So it certainly has been a while. And again, the frustrating part is is obviously the lack of execution of it. But it's the you had the knowledge coming into the game that this is what Minnesota was going to do. Ben talked about that on Tuesday, I believe it was, when he spoke with the media that, you know, Mike Zimmer, they run the dar- double barrel linebacker mug stuff. They're going to put guys in the A-gap. They're going to stress protections. You knew Justin Jefferson was going to be a top threat in this game, and yet you really couldn't take those guys and scheme those guys away. So uh, we'll have to see the tape and ex- exactly what happened, but it felt like Minnesota kept running the same blitzes or the same looks over and over, and Pittsburgh did not do a good job defending it guys weren't hot you know guys were having trouble you know communicating and picking up the right guy and just it was a mess I compared it a a lot to the uh, the loss in 2008 where Jim Johnson the the former uh, the late Jim Johnson the former Eagles DC just kept running the same blitz over and over and over again and Pittsburgh had no schematic answer for it and and Ben got sacked eight times that game and he could have been sacked eight times on Thursday dropped five times uh, officially so just really poor and in, 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 I think execution and the schematic elements of, of it from Adrian Klum right right and uh, the, the tape's going to be uh, just as ugly and especially in the first half uh, the all 22 is going to be just as ugly of that first half as it was uh, the, 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 the game against the Bengals there so this, let's go over to the Steelers offense now and again uh, just a, a horrible start did not put up points until late in the third quarter and then just had that barrage of a comeback um, again the poor start could not run the football despite Minnesota being the, th- the 31st run defense I had a feeling this this team was going to have a tough time running the football just given the makeup of Minnesota with some big guys up front and Pierce and Dalvin Tomlinson and Children Richardson as well uh, they got them but but well, wait here, here's the thing though they should I mean this 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 Vikings front has been able to be been run on sure. and especially to the to the right side you look at I, I think they and I hate yards precarious stat but they were given up uh, on, on runs from center to 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 right tackle uh, 4.9 yards per carry the success rate was almost damn near 70 percent against this unit damn it you're supposed to f- have fixed this running game with with uh you know uh that was the uh uh the the, the goal of this season and here you are uh week 14 of the season and yeah you know, i guess technically you're only missing your left guard because the rest of these guys have played together quite a bit this season here and you got a first round running back in there and you still can't run the football well, uh, at this point, uh, uh, if you can't run it in, in, in those situations, if you're only able to run it because you get in the second half because the teams are lightening up, lightening up, light, lightening up the boxes, uh, playing cover two, then you have done something very wrong up until that point is, is, is my thought there. And that's where we're at. Good job fixing the running game. Yeah. Yeah, no, I I get that. I mean, on paper, this team should have had success running the football, and statistically they did when when Minnesota allowed them to, gave them permission to in the second half. But Pittsburgh really struggles whenever teams have those big pluggers up front, those big, strong defensive tackles. They do better versus some of the quicker, smaller guys. Again, it reminded me of the Bears game where they could not run up the middle because of what Goldman and Hicks were doing. And I think Tomlinson and Pierce and Richardson kind of did similar, at least at first glance. Um, last night, it put Pittsburgh in a ton of third and longs. They were horrible on third down to start the game. I believe they started one of eight on third down. Um, and so they just got themselves in some really bad situations, which certainly helped Minnesota dial up their blitzes and make those even more effective. So the first half offense, just completely, utterly lifeless. <laughs> uh, well, Najee did have an explosive run in this game. So there's that. Uh Mason Look, Rudolph still the, the longest rush of the season. I'm waiting to see if that up oh. broken. I thought he was just going to do it last night, but it was 23, and Rudolph sitting at 26. So we're on track for Mason Rudolph to have the longest run of the season by Pittsburgh Steelers, which sums up the run oh. game as well as I could any any yeah. other stack. Uh, absolutely. And look, I mean, you want to go back, and you know, pe- people are going to. Uh, can continue to get the feel from me that I think that drafting Najee Harris was a wrong decision. Uh, it's not the player that I'm angry about, folks. It's the positional and the positional value, and it's also look if if you had a if, if you had a, uh, uh, a, a, a a top five, top ten offensive line in the NFL going into this draft, and you and then you maybe wanted to spend a first round draft pick on, on a running back, uh, especially after the the, the number twenty spot, have at it. But uh, 
just spinning your wheels right now, I think. And 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 Najee's doing obviously all that he can, uh, uh, yards after contact. But with all that said, uh, uh, you know, get get used to him not having explosive runs, as I've said since the day he was drafted there. Uh, you you hide that stuff by being able to do everything else right in uh, on on offense, and the Steelers are obviously far away from that. So you want to go back and 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 seriously have the conversation about was it the right pick to uh, uh, to to pick Najee in the first round? I mean, then it goes down to well, you know, theoretically, who's going to be there? Would you have to take uh, you know who 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 were the realistic? players mm-hmm. that the Steelers would have drafted in that spot, yada, yada. And yeah, the, the the list that you get is is going to be very, 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 very short, even using hind, uh, hindsight there because of what the Steelers normally, the type player they, 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 they look for, the obvious need versus uh, want that, like it or not, uh, that, that those axes crossed when it cross when it comes to uh, Kevin Colbert and especially on, on, on an off season directive and Art Reese saying fix the run game. I mean, it was either going to be an offensive lineman or a running back in that first spot there. Mm-hmm. So once again, this isn't about Najee Harris uh, a, 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 as much as it is what's he running behind and and right now it's crap. Yeah, it's it's certainly not good enough, not even close. Um, and so the mission of this team was to run the ball effectively. And in, in moments this year, they have done a better job. And again, the do overall numbers from this game look better than probably what it really was. Because if you can only run the ball whenever teams allow you, when they're playing, you know, too high looks, then you don't run the ball well. You're just doing it because of what the defense is doing, and that's right. not the mark of a good running team. Right. I mean, that yeah, you're celebrating explosive plays and run successes against. Uh, a, a scenario where the other team has has the foot on the throat and they just don't want you to big play them back in the game. That That's when you're celebrating these explosive runs and run successes and, and all like that. But in the flip side, you're playing right into what they want you to do because you're running the football and you're killing clock and then, uh, uh, you know, you're shortening the game along the way there. Now, did this thing get a little further away from the Vikings than, than probably what they thought Thought it would be mm-hmm. absolutely, and credit to once again the Ben Roethlisberger, to, you know, for for a, a, and receivers to making catches in that aspect. But the fact that you got in that position in the first place, I mean, you're you're rewarding something that that you know shouldn't have happened. Sure. You know, yeah. The, 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 what happened last week against Baltimore Sunday, I should say, against Baltimore, was you kept the score down in that first half until the offense figured things out, and you couldn't replicate that this time. You dug yourself a really deep hole, being down what 23, 26 nothing at halftime, and then being down twenty nine nothing in the third quarter. And I mean, the fact they got as close as they did is, is pretty remarkable, but uh, not something worth celebrating because you were down 29, nothing. And that's unacceptable in the first place. Uh, it makes you wonder how bad, how, how damn bad is that damn Ravens offense? I mean, really? I mean, uh, you, you get up against these teams against the Bengals and, and the Vikings and let's face it, top to bottom, uh, the Bengals, are the Bengals winning the Super Bowl this year? Are they, are, are the Bengals going deep into the playoffs? I doubt it. Are the Vikings going to the playoffs? Are the Vikings going deep into the playoffs if they get there? No. No. I mean, but it's these kind of teams that just have, you know, have a slash runner and and, 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 and at least a competent quarterback. And that's what Joe Burrow is, at least to this point. And, and having uh, at least one good weapon uh, receiver-wise, obviously, with, 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 uh, with, with the Ravens, you know, they got you got two in in Marquise Brown and Mark Andrews, and then with the Bengals you have Chase. I mean, you got a handful of over there with with, with Higgins and all like that. But all that said, though, they're not a team. Neither one of those teams right now are ones that you're thinking, oh man, look out for the Vikings if they get in the playoffs, or look out for the Bengals. At least I'm not uh, uh, there. And you, you you just go against these offenses and you see them just dissect you early in games the way that, that the Steelers have been dissected. And look, I mean, we know how this is going to end. Uh, it's going to end, and we talked about it already. I mean, this is it, going to be it for Keith Butler. But where do you go from there? How do you go about correcting it? This team is not just one middle linebacker away from being a good defense again. This team is not just one good defensive tackle away from being an elite defense again. There are holes all over this roster on both sides of the football right now, and you're seeing it on a week-in, week-out basis, I think. Yeah, well said. 
Uh, there's a lot of misses, missing pieces, a lot of issues right now. Injury, poor play, veteran age, you know, youthfulness. A, a lot of problems there top to bottom for sure, and that's been evident throughout the season. All right. How bad, once again, how bad is coaching? Where, where is the axis of talent, execution, and coaching? I mean, none of it's been good enough. It's harder to really define that line well, but I think you can – I think there are clear things you can look at from a game plan standpoint and say this was poor. The lack of doubling Jefferson, playing some dime packages, some of the fronts that they were running in this game seemed questionable. And then obviously a lack of execution in poor play uh, up front as well. So I think I think when it's as bad as it is and it's historically bad for Pittsburgh and it's dead last in the NFL this season, when it's at that level of bad, very rarely is it just one aspect of it. It's usually a combination of everything. And I think that's where Pittsburgh's at right now. All right. Uh where were we? Offense? Yeah, let's... Uh, what, what What about Chase Claypool? I was just going to get there, yeah. I know it's right. the elephant in the room here, 40 minutes in this show. Um, again, I don't like to blame one guy for losses. And let's be clear, Chase Claypool, not the sole reason why Pittsburgh lost this game. And to his credit, he did make some pretty unbelievable plays in the second half, including that one catch on the right sideline, which I thought was just DPI. I thought Claypool did not catch the football. I saw it back on replay and said, oh my God, the dude caught it, but... There is no player more frustrating and, and no player that is um, less emotionally mature, it seems, than Chase Claypool. And they need this guy to be a consistent big play threat for this team, a consistent playmaker for this team. And they're getting functionally a 16-year-old who flashes occasionally that makes you kind of want to play him and see more, but just seems so difficult and just seems to do the wrong thing that is wholly within his control almost every single week. Look, uh, you know, it, 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 in the NFL, it is hard for just one player to will a team uh, to win. Now, you, you, you see what TJ, you say that, then you right. see what TJ Watt did uh, 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 did last week against the Ravens there. Uh, and, and it is hard for one player to, 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 to get you to, to lose a game uh you know when you have you dealing with sixty something plays on each side of the ball uh, every week there, but you know at some point the the I, I get the emotion of the game I I, I really do I get that, that that there's so much emotion in this game and and these 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 players put so much into it and you know you make a big play and all like that but. There has got to be some level of self awareness uh, in in here, and right now you have guys that just don't. It's just not chase. You know, pick the week sometimes. You know the here here comes Dave, old man Dave Boomer here. Uh, uh, but the whole running into the end zone after an interception when you're down however many yeah, twenty nine seven it was. I mean. Why? Why? I mean, that's that's such a a me me kind of mo. It's a collective me, and that that that's sense of the matter. But uh, the whole chase club, you know, one of my five keys was kind of uh, built. The last one was about silliness on a short week. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, stay away. You know, the last thing that you need on these short weeks are these stupid penalties, these false starts, the the type of things that t that you tend to see on Thursday night football that make you go, oh, this is why they shouldn't have money uh, Thursday <laughs> night football. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> because because it's short week mm -hmm. kind of stuff. There, sticking your finger in a face of another player. Uh, and, and demeaning him right in front of a referee yep. early, early in the game. I mean, if that's not bad enough, and you can't learn from the from the coach pulling you out for the series after that, that you have to turn around late in the game. And if to hear the the kid try to explain what happened during his press conference at the end of it to. To, to say, oh, I got to be better than that, but in the same breath try to justify mm -hmm. why he did his little, my little first down signal uh, is just mind-blowing uh, overall. Now, look, people say, well, Dave, that goes back to coaching. Mike, Mike Tomlin got to do it better. You can preach this stuff all week that you want, 
all right and 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 whatever but when you get into the game it's up to the up to the player and you know Ben Roethlisberger was asked well that's you know at, after the game you know, it's not my job to reel them in that's the coach's job yeah I, I agree with that to some point but let me tell you, if if I'm in that locker room and I'm a veteran on, on the offensive side of football, and even if I'm Cam Hayward or, or Ben Roethlisberger at this point, I'm not so sure I don't put that kid up against the locker this week, <laughs> you know, and have it take a couple of teammates to get me off of him uh, 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 there. It, it's so embarrassing you know, to see the things are running into the end zone after an interception down that many points or to see him uh, do that with the first down. Uh, and once again, I understand the emotion of the, uh, of the game and, I, and and maybe Boomer Dave is going a bit overboard here. But, man, there's just a time and place for everything. And the optics right now is just so bad when it comes to Claypool. And then, you know, once again, you get pulled from the game. You miss a block off the edge in this game. You damn near fumbled away to football uh, uh, and, and, and got a break because your shin was down in this one. And, yeah, he, he did make some plays in this game. But it's just – it's all that's not enough to help uh, – cover up some of the other things that he did in this game which is just flat out stupid yeah if it wasn't for the draft status the second year ness of his career the the big plays that he is occasionally making this dude would be long gone right now and i and i and i get the excitement and as you said the emotion of the game when i want players to be excited personally i didn't have a big issue with the celebration uh, after the interception because it's not hurting you in any sort of way it's not hurting you in the way that claypool hurt things and i want guys to be excited and that interception ultimately be, ended up being impactful in this game because it helped Pittsburgh get back into this one. So I'm not too upset about that, but with the Claypool stuff where it is, it is hurting you, where you are getting penalties, where you are wasting time with your first down celebration on a fourth and one play, which is a good route and a good catch by Claypool. Just know the know the situation, have the football IQ and the, the awareness to understand what's going on around you. And Claypool seems to lack that and seems to show that on and off the field every single week with the music comments and certainly what he did on the field on Thursday. And if a benching doesn't really get that message across, then I don't know what will get that message across until there's something just internally that, that changes with Claypool's mindset. You know, and, and I watched a lot of his Notre Dame tape, all right? Uh, and, yeah, I mean, he, he was a star there, and there, there was some celebration and all like that. But uh, at no time during during – Watching his final two years of his tape, I think, oh man, this guy is 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 uber diva. You know what I'm saying? He's a hard worker, like a gunner, like a super right. committed dude. It felt like. Now, now there were a moment, your point for the first downs and all, 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 all like, like that. You, you know that 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 kind of stuff that you see there, but but at no at no point really did I think coming out of all the tape that I watched him at Notre Dame that. Uh, Oh man, here we go. You know they're gonna get this kid, and you know he might make a couple plays for you, but he he you know gonna be talking about his his antics uh, on and off the field, uh, that kind of thing. There, it just seems. Uh, I'll put it to you this way. Uh, I this here we are Christmas time. I think sales of Maple Mapletron gear are go. I'm gonna predict Mapletron gear is down uh, 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 for for Christmas this year. I think it's a safe bet. And again, this is not to absolve the issues defensively or other offensive problems in this game. They do run a lot deeper than Chase Claypool. But we can we can separate all those things and say defensively there were problems. Offensively, there were problems that weren't Claypool related. Um, what's most frustrating with Claypool, though, is that it, it, it is so wholly controllable. I mean, they're the easiest things that should be avoided. Don't put a don't put your hand in the, the face mask of a player when they're representing three inches away. You know, don't celebrate a, a first down when the clock is running and you, on your on your potential game tying kind of drive. And then, what happens if you're Trey Turner today? You're sitting there going, "Man, I'm a veteran. I've been doing this for a long time, oh. and I got some kid yelling at me because he's celebrating. Right. I'm trying to get the ball spotted." So, I mean, it's just stuff like that where, again, it's an emotional game, but you just got to be smarter. You got to be more aware. You got to be selfless and understand this is bigger than you. And I know the receivers and a lot of guys kind of have that ego. But that's part. That's partly what makes a good receiver sometimes is having that ego and saying, I'm going to make that play. But there's a line. Sure. And Claypool crosses it continually. And the optics even get even worse, like you said. And I don't know if he's yelling at Trey Turner after the spike oh, or if he's yelling at the referee. Yeah, because to me, I think he's he, – personally, 
I, I might be wrong. I'll, I'll, I'll obviously look at. We got enough time. I'm going to look at it 25 more times before. Uh, uh, by the time we get to Monday here, I almost feel like he was trying to yell at the referee for the for the defensive for 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 the uh, Vikings player and knocking the football out of his hand and and causing a delay that way. Uh, let me tell you, Trey Turner is a bad. You know what? <laughs> I, I don't. I don't. I don't think if I'm if I'm Claypool, I'm yelling at him. And if he did, uh, he, uh, he he look. No, he's, I'm watching the replay. He's yelling at Turner because the refs know we're even near. Okay. Because the ref has to back off as soon as he as he set the football, so he's 100 percent yelling at Turner. Well, look, I learned. Uh, uh, I've I've run my mouth uh, a lot during my days, especially when I was younger. It's hard to eat corn on the cob without no effing teeth. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's one of those <laughs> classic Southern sayings. Brian <laughs> Kelly, I'm sure, will be spouting off soon. Uh, okay, and if he is okay, if he if he's yelling to, yelling at Trey Turner, then Man, that's that that's even worse. I mean, did, you have to think once again. That's a veteran offensive lineman uh, there. Has Trey Turner been perfect? No, spitting on guys, you know, and and, and oh, look. It, it, but there's a time and place for everything, and that what did in that game. Now, was that the reason they lost? I don't know. You know I I don't think so, obviously. But maybe you get one more sh- one more bite of the apple. Maybe it, it just, I, it's the principle I, of the matter. Know? It's right. it's fourth down. You make the play. The clock is running. There's no timeouts. Time is obviously an issue. Don't celebrate. Just get up and let them you know spike the ball. I mean it's it's just lack of awareness. Which again, it's the principle of the matter. Right. And and he's a second year guy, but there's a lot of second year guys who are mature and they're just smarter than that. And and Claypool seems to just do the dumbest thing that kind of makes your face palm every single week. And and you just you wonder how. How does that, how do you correct that? I mean, Claypool has to be the one that decides to correct those things. I mean, you can tell him he knows he shouldn't be doing that, and Tomlin has expressed that, and I'm sure everyone's expressed that kind of stuff to him. It's just a matter of Claypool wanting to to, to change and fix that stuff. And I mean, it's just if this dude was catching ten balls for two hundred yards and two touchdowns every single week, then you could forgive that more. But when he's struggling on the field and having that off the field and situational errors, it it it, it highlights it all the more. Right, and once again, I mean, I, I I don't know how much you. Know, I'm sure I mean, this will get parlayed into this week of Mike Tomlin's lost control of the team, uh, uh, and, and all like that. You can tell these guys to you're blue in the face, but you know, what? Well, okay, well, what do you do if you're Tomlin now? I mean, he's asked after the game, you know, and he says, "We'll see." You know, talking about the bench in there, do you sit this guy down for the first quarter of the game and? You know, there you have a duty to the rest of the guys in the locker room too to put the best guys out there. So we're this isn't this isn't this isn't Notre Dame where you have all these athletes and you're going to play uh, Southern New Mexico. <laughs> yeah, the, hey, the, don't, the, the, don't, don't, don't disrespect Southern New Mexico. The fight. All right, uh, the Idaho Vandals. Oh, okay, now <laughs> you've crossed the line. Now I'm going to. I'm getting, my, I'm my getting hand personal there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there, but uh, I, I did. Uh, Alex is uh, is a, a ha- and how the hell that happened? I don't know. Alex is a Idaho Vandals fan. Uh, go potatoes! No, but, roll potatoes. Uh, roll potatoes. Okay, sorry. Uh, excuse me. Yeah. But uh, I mean, you, you, uh, you know, where is the line sure. where I owe it to my team to put you know the uh, the best player I can out there to make plays, but at the same time send a message that I that that I'm disciplining mm-hmm. uh, this player on top. Of, where, where is that line, and and how much of this falls back on on the coach? Because all this stuff's going to be asked not only starting again this week, but as soon as this team fails to make the playoffs, and even if uh, let's let's not let's not let's throw it all out there. Even if this team makes the playoffs, they're not going anywhere. Okay. Folks? Mm-hmm. So let's just get that out, out of the way again. Yeah, I don't think it's surprising anybody a uh, playoff you know run just getting in there would, would seem like a minor miracle at this point. You're right. In terms of the, the, the decision, that comes down to the coach. What is the right decision? I mean, that's why Tomlin gets paid the, the big bucks here to figure that stuff out because there's the competing thought of the best talent on the field versus the accountability. You're, you're preaching playing your best guys and also preaching accountability and not making mistakes and not – you know, self-inflicted wounds that hurt the team. And Claypool's done, there's a mix of both there. But um, James Washington played well. He had some big catches. And so maybe that will nudge this team to reducing Claypool's snap count and allow Washington to play more as the Z receiver. 
And here's the thing, to have such the self unawareness after the game for for Claypool, and not only that, you embarrass your organization by dropping an F bomb during your during and look, I understand emotions. Once again, that kind of stuff slips, and I'd be absolutely horrible in front of a mic if I was a player. I'm sure they, they you know, uh, they'd have to beat me a, a, a quite a few times here. But uh, uh, man, to 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 give the kind of answer that he gave, it just it, it, it makes you even drop your mic yeah. or you know uh just drop you know clutch your pearls again in that situation if i'm that kid right now once again if i'm so a veteran in that locker room there's some prayer meetings going on uh uh as soon as everybody gets back in pittsburgh and and, and, and back in that locker room and if i'm chase claypool at this point here's the here's another bad thing about this i can't believe we're spending all this time talking about this but it's going to get talked about anyway this game happened on when Thursday night, right? Sure. Yep. How many more days oh, until yeah. the next NFL game is played? Not until Sunday. And that, that new cycle, especially in Pittsburgh, will churn it out for the next day. Oh, man. We're going to be talking about this on into Monday. And it's a good thing that we don't have a and show on Tuesday. Because uh, Tomlin week. will be asked yeah. about it again. And they will be asked about it during the week before the Titans game. So get used to this conversation. Right. If I'm Claypool, man, I, I get on that TikTok machine. And I'm saying, you know what? Uh, I made a huge, huge. Mis- uh, I, I try to, I try to play as much uh, 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 real damage control as I possibly can right now, and it, it, it still won't amount much to a hill of beans, but at least the effort will be made. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Uh, but it, that's what I'm doing if I'm Chase Claypool right now. After I wake up and say, "Oh man, I'm I." really messed up these last 24 hours here uh once again it's not end of the world kind of stuff that he did but it just uh, the optics and the whole it's it, it steeders are easy targets and all this social media stuff and and that kind of stuff you know seeing that it, it just not the one thing either it wasn't just to point the finger if, if that had been it and it stopped after that and you didn't have the the uh, the point for the first down after sure Maybe you're looking a little bit further past of it, but it's sure. just the culmination of everything. And anyway, back to football. Yeah, it sums up the frustration. And and from a football standpoint, you know, stretching the football out on second and two, I understand what he's trying to do, but the risk is not worth the reward. There, Bill Belichick says. Well, Bill I'm, Belichick, have your ass on the sideline for that. Well, yeah, yeah, that his his rule is you only stretch the football out on fourth down, and only whenever it's you know do or die, and second and two is not do and die. And so I get what he's trying to do there, but just not worth it. And so. Um, again, I, I don't care that he swore in the in the post game press conference. I'm sure Bert Lawton probably cares more than I do about how that looked ultimately. But it just felt like he was very flippant. Like, yeah, I screwed up, but you know, the ref really should have called a penalty, and it just felt like it didn't really bother. Po- him yeah, pointing the finger elsewhere. You know. Yeah, and again, to get mad at Trey Turner like that, just where, where, where was your head at, man? And, and yeah. Anyway, so. Claypool, though, not, not far from the only issue. I, I wish Claypool was the only issue this team had right, right now. And, right. and there were Good issues point. just fundamentally across the board, including the snapping of the football, which has been a big issue this season, not only in, in terms of the accuracy or lack thereof, but just literally getting the snap off. And maybe that was Kendrick Green's first game ever in a dome. And crowd noise certainly seemed to be a factor in this one, but it was pulling teeth at times just to try to execute a good snap over and over again against the Vikings. Look, I don't like to make hard, rash decisions on these young players. I always like to say you got to get into the six and uh, uh, six and you know seventh uh, game of, uh, of the second season and get a, a pretty good sample size uh, on this stuff. But man, just things are not trending really, really well with with, with Kendrick Green. I, I thought it's just a TV tape, so don't you know don't uh, uh, don't don't you know, circle what I have to say too hard just yet until we get to all 22. But I thought Kendrick Green and, and LeGlue were probably the, 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 the two biggest liabilities on that offensive line. And, and look, not, none of them are going to go to the Pro Bowl the way they played, obviously. But uh, 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 I, I thought those two were the biggest liabilities on that offensive line. And, man, just Marquise Pouncey thinks uh, Kendrick Green has snapping problems. <laughs> I mean, that's – that you know, and I'm, I'm being – Marquise Pouncey did not say that, 
but uh, I'm, I'm being funny there. But I mean that that's how bad you just don't. Uh, Ben's back there not knowing which way the uh, which way the ball is going to come at him. I don't think. At least with with Pouncey, he had a, a general area where the the, the snap was going to be uh, more to uh, Ben's right. I think. Uh, or you know, high or in that area. You don't know where it's coming at when it comes out of green, I don't Yeah, think. it's like playing that old pressure luck game. No whammies, no whammies. Where's it going to stop? No one knows. Will the snap happen? Will it be high? And then there was one time where Ben just didn't catch the football, and it clanked off of him, and Nashi kind of caught it, and they get called for an eligible man downfield. So even when the snap was, was good, it, it wasn't good, <laughs> ultimately, in terms of the outcome. So just frustration, and then in pass pro, it was bad. The run game was poor. Um, you got your vertical shot. This is just kind of a, 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 a chuck and duck kind of offense. Just throw it deep and hope those guys make plays, and that's how you kind of move as an offense. All right. Uh, you know, look, end of the game there, that pass to Pat Fryer, absolutely beautiful mm-hmm. pass by, by Ben. Right. That, you know, we, we've, we've talked about the last couple of weeks that, you know, saying, oh, that might have been the best uh, uh, pass that uh, Ben Roethlisberger has made all season. Ben had a couple of them in this game. That down the middle uh, uh, throw up uh, uh, up to James Washington for a touchdown where really only his guy is going to catch that. Uh, another middle of the field throw. So so kudos to Ben on that one. And and and, and the throw to Firemuth there. Uh, and I, I, I don't know. We, we, you know, it's our job to kind of look and say, is this a drop? Is it a not a drop? Uh, yada, yada. I, I will say this. I thought Harrison Smith, if you slow that thing down, he made a hell of a play on, mm-hmm. on that football uh, on fire move. So uh, you want your guy obviously to, obviously to hang on to it, right? And, you know, one of the, uh, one of the strong pre-draft Coming out of the draft factors would would would, would Pat Firemuth as he catches everything that comes his his way, especially inside the red zone. Uh, but within that, you know, the other team is paid to make plays as well too, and that that's a tough catch to yeah. make. And I thought Harrison Smith made a great play on that. Plus, you know, Firemuth had to make sure he had to try to brace himself for uh, for the hit coming the other direction as well too. Uh, there, it's just it, it's unfortunate. I, I I think you hang your hat on the fact that even if Firemuth catches that, they still have to get the two point conversion, which you feel pretty good that they might have done, but there was still one more step right. in the process uh, had, had, had he made that catch. Yeah, that's a good point. And their two point conversion earlier in the game did not, uh, did not go well for the Steelers. Um, they did hit on one of them though. The, the previous one though, right? The, the one bef- uh, they? before. Yeah. Didn't they hit on one two point conversion that to one of the 16 point game at one time? Oh yeah, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. That was Deontay. That one where um, Ben almost got hit and he found Deontay coming across the middle. The first one, the, the screen to, to uh, Deontay was the failed one there. Uh, so they were one or two. Um, yeah. I mean, Friar Muth, really tough play. It's a play I know that he's able to make a play that obviously in the moment he, he needs to, to make for the team, but Smith made a, a great hit, a legal hit as well to do that legally is so tough to do with the way the NFL defines things. And obviously they called Minka for a hit in that game that was a hundred percent clean and legal. And so, you know, you know, you never know if the ref's going to throw the flag or not. So Fryermuth catches almost everything, I guess is the qualifier we have to put on now. Uh, why do you have Ray Ray McLeod trying to block big uglies out on the edge like that? Bless the kid's heart. The kid will try it and uh, gives a lot of effort as a blocking wide receiver, but there's, you know, uh, some square play pegs just don't need to be put and try to be forced into round holes. And I just don't understand why they, why they put the kid in that situation. Yeah. He's got the heart of the little engine who could, he blocks like the little engine who could, um, no, he tries. I mean, yeah, they were trying to run some crack toss stuff with him and, you know, Deontay trying to down block and just really tough situations. Um, so yeah, I don't think those guys are put in the best situation, but McLeod certainly does give good effort. I mean, and that's more than I can say about some of these guys because the effort from this receiver group from time to time just really wanes. You know, Deontay on that interception, that slant, he probably should have run through that better than he did. Um, ben probably shouldn't have made that throw in the first place. Maybe that's why Deontay kind of stopped running, didn't think the ball was going to come his way. But there were just too many times. Tyler Wise has done a good job this year kind of pointing out some of the loafs and downfield blocking. And you know, I pointed out some of the post interception type stuff that has happened where this receiver group, they're talented, but they can just – and Deontay you know, played well overall. I'm not trying to be too mean to him, but just overall this group can definitely frustrate you. Yes, and defensive side of the ball, I think it's worth noting that uh, we have been on, or at least I have been on Devin Bush quite a bit uh, this season. He at least 
showed up making mm-hmm. a few plays in this game. He had a nice pass breakup uh, uh, in this game and then uh, got a finger on a football that ended up in the hands of a killer Witherspoon. So uh, I want to make sure, you know, pe- people, people, People say that I'm not fair, but really I am. Uh, I always like to try to give credit where, where I think credit's uh, due, especially after guys that I've you know popped on quite a bit as far as play. Now, does any of what happened uh, 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 make me think that, uh, that, that this team should pick up the fifth, fifth-year option on them? No, mm-hmm. but uh, it, it is important to point out when when the kid does something good that, that, that you pointed out. And I, I thought he made a, a couple plays in this game. And that that needs to be talked talked about, I think. Yeah, uh, two impact plays in the past game. We'll have to see the run defense when you allow 242. There's probably a lot of issues up front, but I don't want to put all that on Devin Bush, and you'll know, have to go back and see. Uh, the issues seem to be pretty popcorn, pretty across the board. And kudos to Akella Witherspoon, two interceptions in uh, his first game, college or pro, never done that before. And so that was a obviously capitalized off the Bush tip and then drove on that slant route and picked it off. I thought he was going to house it. He kind of ran out of steam at the end of that one and got tackled. Pittsburgh still found the end zone later in that drive anyway. So Witherspoon stepping up there. Um, Cam Sutton, tough game for him and, and some tough situations, but uh, allowing two touchdowns in this one, that, that 62 yarder you mentioned earlier to Osborne, that was a, a killer in this one. So, uh, arguably Cam Sutton's worst game of the season. Maybe his worst game of his career. I'm not sure, but uh, either way, a pretty terrible performance. And hopefully Joe Hayden can come back and get healthy for the Titans game. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, the, you know, and what do you do if, uh, if Hayden is ready? I mean, are you suggesting to bench Sutton or, or, or I, I'm, I'm asking, yeah, which way do you go there? I mean, I think you're still going to play Cam Sutton. Uh, so I think Hayden at left corner, Sutton at right corner, and then Witherspoon obviously will, will be the dime guy with the way that he's playing. So he's going to have a role um, just in that in that sub-package dime role, unless unless you want to move Sutton to the slot and nickel, but I, I doubt they're going to do that. Okay. Well, I mean, he's obviously, uh, and and that's another kid. Look, I mean, you don't ask him to tackle. You, you, it looks like you. And Keith Butler talked about his length and all like that. You have guys like that that can run uh, in in Witherspoon. And now that he's learned, I'm just glad now that uh, at least they're getting a little something out of out of Witherspoon after spending the fifth round draft pick on him. You know. Yeah, I mean, it's good to get something. And and the guy played well. He made plays in coverage. He made impact plays, and his tackling was. Decent. I mean, had that big third down stop in that first drive that you mentioned. So, yeah, it's good to see him come on around a little bit. Better late than never. Absolutely. Special teams. Here's the thing. He's going to be a free agent after the year as well, too. So you're going to get him in these final couple of games. He's going to he's going to he's, he's going to make a couple of plays. He's going to waltz off in in, in in free agency more than likely. Well, you got to you know? do the whole Chris Wormley. He with a spoon owes you some snaps. That's how you got to convince him to come back. And if Hayden's gone, yeah. then maybe you give you know, you say well, Hayden's gone. This competition's open. Maybe you, you tell with a spoon to come back and give him. A little bit, of, a little bit of money to uh, to do so. So we'll see. Special teams in this one: Boswell missing his first field goal since week three in terms of actual field goals, not extra points. Uh, so that snaps his streak of twenty. Uh, maybe missing a forty-nine yarder on the Steelers' opening drive. There must have been a, a draft in Minnesota's dome with those those kicks Ooh. hooking left from uh, Joseph and Boswell. The AC was blowing, wasn't it? I guess so. So that's – and then Presley Harvin, a poor performance. Uh, the net was bad. I don't know what the official net was, but it was really bad. At one point, it was a 24-yard, uh, I believe, net punt, a 41-yard punt and 17-yard return. So Harvin struggles continue, and that was inside of a dome where you know weather conditions obviously are not an issue. And I think there was uh, uh, one, one other thing about uh... – uh, I thought McLeod could have probably fielded one of those punts too. I had to go back and look at that. Okay. Uh, uh, that that he'd let bounce or something like that. But uh, look, it was a team loss, right? I mean, yep. uh, uh, for for sure, you let you know the offense can't keep up and, and score any points in the first half. The defense let this thing let lets this thing get away from it. Uh, Going to be interesting. You know, why what Mike Tomlin asked more about? Uh, you know. Uh, making a more of a concerted effort to at least to make sure Jefferson did. Okay, what do you think about that deep ball uh, uh, to, to, to Osborne? Uh, at first, I thought he, at first uh, on, in the live view, I thought, man, he pushed off, you know, but I think you, I, I'm not so sure that uh, uh, 
uh, Sutton maybe just didn't get his feet tangled or something in there. Yeah, I thought it was clean. Um, and not, not enough to call it OPI. And Sutton just seemed unaware and just kind of off balance and flailing a little bit and never really found the football and, and fell to the ground. So I thought it was a, a clean play by Osborne. All right. But, uh, boy, that was a sure, – that sure came at the wrong time, didn't it? <laughs> yeah. it not that 60-yard – Touchdown passes ever come at the right time there, but uh, that one, that one, Charlotte, you you thought this team had a chance to get really get back into it, and then you give up something like that. You know? Did you have an issue with Tomlin going for two when it was twenty nine to twenty instead of kicking the extra point to make it an eight point game? Was it the ultimately failed two point conversion to uh, Deontay on the screen? Nah, not really. Thanks. No, nah, I think you just you you you, you got to pick a time to start chasing. Yeah, I will say for whatever reason Pittsburgh was insistent on running a lot of those bubble and smoke screens against a lot of press coverage, a lot of cornerbacks rolled up and asking a lot out of the receivers to block and linemen to pull and get into space. And they were not effective in this game. Could have been a lot of interceptions and there were tip passes and just ugly outcomes on that two point play and others. And so I'm not sure what the obsession was of trying to throw the one step screen game when cornerbacks are rolled up and pressing. Right, right. That didn't make that, that didn't make sense. All right, Dave. Any other final thoughts here in this one? That's the Steelers. Six, how, six, how many how many holes does this team have? E- even with Swiss oh, cheese. God. I mean, yeah, it's a lot. Uh, and, and and can they be fixed this season? No, uh, not not in the course of the last four games of the season. Um, and the schedule gets tough with you know Tennessee and what's the rest of the schedule? Is it Tennessee, KC? Cleveland, Baltimore, is that the last four? Yeah, yeah, four, four, four uh, pretty decent uh, uh, teams. teams that you got to play here, you know. So uh, it, it certainly the, the only the only bright spot here is a, I guess you know you get the extra days now, uh, and you got a super bad taste in your mouth. Uh, you get the extra rest b- before you entertain the Titans at home. So uh, you know they're going to get eviscerated all this week, just like they did after the game against the uh, the Bengals for the most part. Here, uh, see how they respond. And I guess you know one of the things here too is 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 if we talk ahead of this game. I guess if you had to pick one game to lose uh, 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 of these final five, it would have been against Minnesota. And now, I mean, look, you are six, six and one. I mean, you almost have to run the table, right? I mean, you got to go at least three and one, right? At at the very least. And you're going to need some help. I think um, if you get in that situation, Uh, I think that if you run the table, I think you can get in. You think Uh, they're going to run the table? Because I don't think they're going to run the table. No, no, I don't. I, I think what you have to hope for at this point, though, too, is. Man, I think you got to hope that the Ravens win the next couple of games and so does division up because that could potentially give you one easy game at the end in, in, in week 17. All right, because the, uh, you know, hopefully the Ravens get in a situation where seeding doesn't matter. So I think part of you as a Steelers fan has to root for for uh, for Baltimore to beat Cleveland this, you know, on Sunday. Yep. Uh, and then obviously root for the uh, the higher seeded AFC teams ahead of you, I guess the rest of them to, to lose uh, and, you know, can kind of go from there. But it, it, I think three wins would give you a shot. Uh, I think the division's out of the question now uh, for, for, for sure. So I think you're playing for one of those last wild card spots and you run, you run the table. I like the chances. You you win just three. Um, you're probably going to have a lot of if, if, and, and this uh, need to happen. I do think if you're nine, seven, and one, I think you get in six or seven seed. Probably seven seed, but I think you would get in. Um, but of course, going three and one is still going three and one against four right. very talented teams, and and that's going to be a difficult challenge. And look, I you know the. the the Titans, I we'll see what happens this week. The the Titans are certainly beatable, I think. Uh, of of all these teams that the Steelers have to play uh, uh, to close out the schedule, what's the most winnable game of of the of the four remaining ones? Probably the Titans game, assuming that Derrick Henry does not play because they have a lot of injuries there. All, all these teams are beatable. Every team in the AFC is beatable. Every team is there's no dominant team here, um, and so uh, all of these teams have had good wins and, and, and bad losses, and so they're all winnable. But Pittsburgh's got to just take care of their own business. Play, right. You know, I mean, you, you definitely can't scoreboard watch now. Uh, look, I mean, it, it is plausible. I think that they go three and one. 
but you got to go three and one. Yeah, and, and, and well, you do have to kind of scoreboard watch though. So this week you have to be rooting for probably, like you said, Baltimore to beat Cleveland, right? Because you want Baltimore to kind of run it up and not have Cleveland kind of hang around as a potential wild card team. So that would have the and and I, I want Baltimore to be in a position where that week seventeen game does not matter. Yeah, week, week eighteen. Them. Yeah, yeah, last game of the season or week yeah. eighteen. I'm so sorry. you want the Browns to go six and seven. You want obviously the 49ers to beat the Bengals for obvious clear reasons. You want. Uh, I assume you would want the Chiefs to beat the Raiders, right? To drop the Raiders to six and seven on the year. Yeah, I mean, because the Chiefs, Chiefs the are going to get in if they win 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 the division, yeah, right? Let them win the West, and you want to just knock off potential wild card teams. So you want the Chiefs to beat the Raiders. You want obviously Jacksonville to try to pull off an upset against Tennessee. Not to that happening. They're there, but probably not. And. Detroit's playing Denver, so Denver probably going to win that one. I mean, we'll see. Lions coming off a victory. Um, the Bucks play the Bills, so you want the Bucks to win that game, obviously. And those are probably the ones you want to look for. So you're rooting for the Chiefs, you're rooting for the Ravens, the 49ers, and Tampa Bay is kind of like the main core teams to, uh, to 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 root for. And the Chiefs, if I didn't mention them, root for the Chiefs as well. All right. All right, Dave, I think we should get to our actually uh, – let, let's talk about week 14. Before we do that and before we make our picks for the week, and congrats to you, Dave. Uh, you are the or- – Warren Buffett's the Oracle of Omaha. You are the Oracle of Las Vegas as you are picking these things here for the Steelers. You were right about the uh, the Vikings winning last night. I was wrong. Um, so let's go to rest of our picks here. Before we do that, though, let's hear from our friends at my bookie. Yeah, let's talk about our friends at MyBookie. From all the biggest games to the smallest events, make every bet worth your while with MyBookie. Start by doubling your first deposit instantly with MyBookie's first deposit bonus. Double your money before you even place a bet, and all you have to do is sign up and deposit using our exclusive promo code, Terrible at my bookie. There are tons of great games and props to take advantage of uh, this week. And look, you got the you what the Army Navy game uh, going on uh, this weekend. I always look forward to watching that as well too. So that would be a good one uh, to bet on. Obviously, a full slate of NFL action the rest of the weekend, starting on on Sunday as well too. So uh, make sure you get in on the action if you have yet to do it uh, so far. Don't wait any longer. Head to my bookie today to redeem your double deposit bonus so you can get in the game and start winning big today that's promo code terrible terrible to receive your double your first deposit bonus instantly in your account no hassle no wait bet anything anytime anywhere with our friends at my bookie and you can get to them by going to mybookie.ag and that's where i'm going right now to pull up the lines for the rest of the games uh this week and we shall start with the las vegas raiders you talked about at the kansas city chiefs the chiefs at home laying nine and a half points mm. here it's a big line but the chiefs have really turned things around which i don't think is really that unexpected but defensively the way they've gone from just you know sieve to to juggernaut has been remarkable. Give me the Chiefs. Give me the Raiders to at least cover this one. I I, I think they I think Derek Carr finds a way to get a couple of big plays to keep this one at least close here. Uh, ooh, the New Orleans Saints on the road at the New York Jets. Uh, uh, who is even going to quarterback? I, I guess what Trevor Sim- Sim- Simeon going to be back? Taysom uh, Hill still starting for the Saints. That finger's okay? It's not, right. it's not okay, but he's going to play through it, apparently. All right. Well, uh, the Saints on the road against the New York Jets. Uh, looks like, man, I'm, my, God, my eyes are so bad. Five and a half on this one. I can't see the hook on this one. Five and uh, a half. Uh, Saints on the road favored by five and a half. Well, I do not want to see this game. I'll tell you that much. Kamara's, I think, going to be back for them. I don't have a great feeling about this one. I'm going to go with the Saints, though. A weird line on this one for sure, but I like at least it's not at six there. So I will take the Saints and lay the five and a half there. Jacksonville Jaguars on the road against the Tennessee Titans. Uh, Jaguars uh, or the Titans at home laying eight and a half at home. Is that too big of a number or no? Not too big. Give me the Titans. 
Yeah, I think the Titans cover this one easily as well, too. I'll lay the eight and a half with you there. The Baltimore Ravens at the Cleveland Browns. The Browns actually favored in this one. The Ravens took it uh, to the Browns a couple of weeks ago there, uh, looking to, to, to sweep there. The Browns absolutely, I think, have to have this one if they want to stay in the hunt. Uh, the Browns laying two and a half at home. The issue with the Browns is do they get enough big plays offensively, especially in the past game they haven't. The Ravens do. Give me Baltimore. Man, it just makes you feel like the Ravens just – but they did lose another you know, another injury there. I'll do it. I'll lay uh, – I'll, I'll take the two and a half points here. So give me Baltimore plus two and a half. I think Baltimore wins this outright. I think that's what you're pretty much saying as well yeah. too. Uh, the Falcons on the road against the Carolina Panthers. The Panthers have not won a game with Cam yet, have they? Uh, that sounds accurate. Yeah, I think so. Uh, they are favored by two and a half over Matt Ryan in the Falcons in this one. Uh, give me the Panthers, even though they fired their OC for what felt like scapegoat reasons. Give me the Panthers. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm with you. I think Cam finally gets the W, and they, they win it by a field goal here. So lay the two and a half there. Cowboys on the road against the Washington football team. Washington at home getting four and a half points. Yeah, the Cowboys' backfield seems very up in the air with the issues of with Zeke and Pollard, especially Washington's defense has been playing better as of late. What's the line on this one? Four and a half. Washington getting four and a half at yeah, home. Give me Dallas. You know what? I think Washington might have something for this one in this one. Maybe they don't win it outright, but I'll take the four and a half points there. Seattle Seahawks on the road against the Houston Texans. Boy, Seattle's a mess, but Houston's even more of a mess right now. Uh, Texans at home, plus eight and a half. Yeah, David Culley just announced Davis Mills will start the scheme and start the rest of the season. Um, mm. Still, despite the Seahawks being the mess that they are, it's Mills versus Russell Wilson. Give me Wilson and the Seahawks. I think you can boil it down just like that, just fine. I'll lay it a ha- the eight and a half with uh, Seattle in this one as well, too. Detroit Lions on the road uh, against the Denver Broncos. Denver laying 10 at home against the Lions. You know what? That's too big of a line for me. The Lions, they're scrappy. They're competitive, fresh off their victory. Broncos probably win Lions cover. I smell the rat in this one as well, too. I don't think the Lions win, but I like that 10 points. I'm going with you. I'll take uh, the Lions plus 10. New York football giants on the road against the Chargers. Who are the Chargers uh, at this point? Whoever they are, they're laying 10 points at home to the Giants. I don't know who they are. They're better than the Giants, though, significantly so. Um, I think Mike Glennon is starting. I think Jones is going to be out there one snap away from Jake Fromm playing in this one. Give me the Chargers. Yeah, I, I, I'm going to go with you on this one, too. I'm going to lay the 10 points with the Chargers at home against the Giants on this one. 49ers on the road against the Bengals. This ought to be a good game to watch in the, I think, the late afternoon, 425 start. Uh, the Bengals are the underdog at home against the 49ers by a point and a half. Wow, that surprises me. I'm going with the Bengals in this one. I think it will at least be a close game. I'm surprised the Bengals are home dogs. This is going to be a good game. Uh, I will take the 49ers to win this one by a field goal on the road. I will lay that point and a half there. Buffalo Bills, another good game on the road against Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The Buccaneers, who are the, who are the Buffalo Bills right now? Uh, uh, Tampa laying three and a half at home against the Bills. Yeah, man. Um, coming off that, that wild loss that Buffalo had when the Patriots threw the ball three times. I don't know. I've stuck with Buffalo a lot in this one. I'll stick with them one more time and go with the Bills. I'll go with Tom Brady. I'll lay the three and a half points against Buffalo. Uh, Bears on the road against the Packers. Uh, Does Aaron Rodgers own them by another 12 and a half points? That's the question here. Uh, Lambeau Field. And this one is the Sunday night game, I believe, uh, here. So uh, uh, 12 and a half points. Packers favored over the Bears. Yeah, it's a pretty wide uh, margin there, but still, the Packers do own the Bears. Rodgers does own the Bears, and so I'm going Green Bay and Aaron Rodgers. Man, that 12, 12 and a half, that's a, that's a big number. You know what? I, I think the Packers win. I'll take the Bears plus the 12 and a half in this one. Uh, closing it out, another good game to, to, to end this thing up on Monday night, I believe. Uh, the Rams at the, uh, at the Arizona Cardinals. Uh, Cardinals going to get back some healthy people here, laying two and a half at home against the Rams. Yeah, that's going to be a great game. Um, man, I don't know who I want to pick here. I feel like I trust the Cardinals a little bit more, so I guess I'll go Arizona, but this is going to be hopefully a wire-to-wire kind of game. 
I will take Arizona later two and a half as well, too. So uh, that's it. That's our picks. Uh, thanks to the line at mybookie.ag. Get over there and sign up for that uh, uh, that uh, W deposit bonus using promo code Terrible, please. All right, Dave. Let's get to the email machine and close out today's show. They should. Oh Lord, the sea was angry. <laughs> I bet um, it. Where the where uh, the whale? Yeah, uh, let, there are a lot of angry emails in here, it seems like. like 90 uh, yes. Let's see. Bryce uh, says, uh, always interesting with our Steeders. Uh, kudos to Aditi for asking Tomlin, does that include your coaching staff after his proclamation that he would leave no stern, stone unturned? Thought it was hilarious. Lord knows. Keith Butler uh, needs to go, and Jerry Olsowski might be out the door with him. Uh, uh, with the way these inside guys have played, Dave, I agree that Tom needs to step away from the quasi co- coordinating, hire a de- defense coordinator who can bring fresh ideas, per- perspectives, and let them coach the defense. Same with the offensive candidate ends up being one and done. Time to bring in an experienced OC and let them do what they do. Number two, he says, as it stands right now, has a Kello punched his ticket as a lock to come to camp next season and compete for a significant role in this defense. I mean, it all depends on what he wants, right? I mean, I, I don't think you can punch the ticket and say he's a lock to come back. I mean, obviously the last two games, there's, there's, he's made some plays there and Lord knows how this team is with, with, with cornerbacks. You would like to think that, you don't let these guys get away from you, but their you know, corners are needed around the NFL. And if he makes a big enough splash, he's going to have some uh, – Akello, a, a at least to this point, I think owes it to himself to test the market. Yeah, I mean, we'll see. There's certainly no lock when a guy's going to be a free agent, and you never know how the negotiation goes. I mean, if you assume that Joe Hayden's gone, which I don't want to 100% assume, but it feels likely at this point, then there'll be an opportunity for Witherspoon to uh, to come back, and certainly Pittsburgh would probably want him to, to be back to have some returning guys. Um, to the to the uh, first part, I didn't understand the question from the standpoint of, like, they're not going to, like, change head coaches or, like, coordinators midseason, so I didn't understand the angle of that question. Um, but in terms of... Uh, you know, the offseason you know, agenda. Look, this like, defense is more than just Keith Butler needs to go. <laughs> yeah, and, and Tomlin's running the show for better or for worse. And right now it's for worse. So there are no DCs coming in who's going to, like, run things because just Tomlin's running the show defensively. You know, look, if Keith wants to hang around and be in a, 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 go back to being, which, you know, glorified linebackers coach have at it. Obviously, things don't normally happen that way. I don't really think you can pin a lot. I mean, Jerry, Jerry o- Olsowski's just working with the clay that he's being given to. So, uh, uh, but I mean, I, I think it's, it, it, it feels like anyway that Keith Butler is going to be gone mm-hmm. after this season. We'll see about Canada, uh, and, and far as that goes, I think it uh, stays. That's my. You, Pretty good guess. I, I that's my gut right now as well too. But you know, stranger things have happened. Uh, Colin Finnegan writes in, "Hey guys, I know Trey Turner isn't exactly setting the world on fire with his play, but I've been impressed with his veteran leadership ability, highlighted by his role in the clay pool, pool incident at the end, where he seemed to run over and yell at uh, Chase and try to get the ball back. I know it's been mentioned on the show before, but for these reasons, do you think we might see him for another year? I think it may be helpful for some con- continuity at, at least." Uh, I mean, there's still the play on the field. I mean, you could talk about leadership all, 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 all you want. I, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm definitely not breaking the bank. I mean, I might offer him something on, on a one-year deal, but it just feels like this team needs to start getting younger at, at this other guard position over here. And... You know, has 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 uh, has he played Turner played enough to get himself a contract somewhere else from from another team on a one year uh, deal as well too? I understand it. I mean, I it, I guess it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world if 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 Trey Turner came back, but I, I'll put it to you this way: I would not bet my house that Trey Turner will be back in 2022 from where we sit right now. I wouldn't either. Frankly, I'm mixed on that because you thought he'd be here for just one year when they initially signed him. His play has certainly not been great this year, but I think Tomlin really likes this guy. He certainly does bring that veteran and tangible leadership. He's a physical guy in pass pro and in the run game. That's certainly something Pittsburgh has been looking for from their guys this season. And if you don't, you know, 
re-sign Trey Turner, then you have, probably have to go through the draft because you're not going to go through free agency because you might as well just re-sign Turner. So you'll go through the draft and try to find someone there like a Zion Johnson from Boston College. So I don't know. Um, my gut is telling me yes, but but uh, I haven't thought about it too much here you know, being in the middle of the season. You wouldn't bet on no. bet on him coming well, back, I mean, though, right? I mean, with my predictions, I wouldn't bet on anything. Um, but uh, my, my gut's telling me he comes back. Okay. Uh, my gut says no, but, uh, I mean, obviously we'll, we'll spend more time on this the, uh, the further we get into the off season here. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Antonio Frazier writes in longtime listener and site follower. I love everything you guys do, uh, by far the best site for Steelers knowledge and news. Thank you for that. Uh, my question about the game is, do you think the Steelers accidentally made it a game last night? The play calling in the second half looked like they were, uh, taking their ball and going Going home, I blame the coaching staff more than anything for the stupid two reverses, basically back to back on the Claypool almost fumble series. Uh, it's like they don't play with a sense of urgency and no desire to be productive with possessions. Last thought: the defense play call and also looks like the opposing team always runs the best play against uh, our defensive call. Thanks for taking my email. Look, I mean, I, there's going to be a lot of recency bias in here, but. The, the, the thing is, is there's been a lot of recency <laughs> with a lot about about this. Uh, I don't think they they accidentally made it a game uh, last night. I think it's a testament to some guys finally making some plays down the field. I thought Ben played really, really good in the second half. I thought they protected a little bit better. And uh, I think uh, they uh, the Vikings kind of said, have at it. You know, try, try, try to come back. I think there were a lot of things that played into that second half uh, of that game. Uh, can you nit, nitpick on a few of those reverses? Absolutely, you can. Uh, as I stated, it does seem like early in games, teams know exactly what the Steelers are going to do uh, defensively, whether it be the way they line up in, 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 in leverage and all like that. And you'd like to see the Steelers be able to come out and, 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 and beat teams with their offense that way, but it just doesn't happen that way. So, I mean, there's, there's so much, there's so much wrong with this team that you just can't say fire Keith Butler. You just can't say bench Chase Claypool, bench Devin Bush, bench Joe Schobert. There's just so much wrong with this team. I mean, here we are talking about a Kello Witherspoon being a bright spot on this defense right now, a guy that you traded a fifth round draft pick for a guy that couldn't get on the field for the first nine, 10, 11 weeks of the season. And here we are, uh, trying to, trying to, uh, you know, light a bonfire to celebrate him. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll take him there on that point. Um, yeah, I, I'm always again, hesitant to say lack of urgency or desire or things like that. And this team did fight hard. So there certainly is an urgency and desire, but yeah, when you dig yourself big holes every single game in the NFL, it's tough to do. And, and the comeback the way Pittsburgh did is is incredibly rare just from a historical standpoint. But, um, yeah, you're down 29 nothing. I mean, no team has ever come back like that, and Pittsburgh's comeback falls just short. Uh, Jonathan Mason, uh, where do we go from here? Sounds like an old Alan Parsons Project song. That's a it's way ahead of I was going to say – um, where do we go from here now that all of the children are growing up? Okay. Uh, pretty good. Pretty good pipes there. Uh, not, not bad. Not bad for uh, uh, as much as I smoked during my year, during my uh, life, right? Yeah. That's not, well, well, wasn't there another song? It wasn't Guns N' Roses. Where do we go? Oh, where do yeah. we? Yeah. Uh, Sweet Child of Mine. Yeah, there yeah. you go. That's tip of my tongue. There you go. There you go. Hey, I got it. Uh, yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah. hey, look at it's us. It's all bad. <laughs> <laughs> all bad here on this podcast. Look at us connect, having a moment <laughs> together here. Uh, a musical moment yeah, at that. Never going to happen what, again. What, what, so what do you listen to? What, what, uh, what, my Spotify. You're, you're all over the uh, map, I have the you? most eclectic Spotify list. I mean, it's it's. I mean, it's hard to even describe. It's every genre. I was listening to, um, oh, what's the song here in my list here? Uh, Marlena Shaw, California Soul. That was on my uh, playlist last I don't even night. Know what that is. No, it's uh, you, you. Once you hear it, you would know it. So anyway, it's a very, very strange playlist of every single genre. Oh, my, my wife's running up the stairs. I think I set off some sort of alarm. Yeah, the singing probably <laughs> alarms, police showing up, things like that. 
Uh, let's see. Shouldn't we all be on the same page that Ben isn't the overall problem for this team? Why go and throw a bunch of draft picks at Russell Wilson or Aaron Rodgers? This team just simply isn't talented enough. O-line, D-line, middle linebacker, cornerback. Would you rather keep Ben another year knowing he will have a few bad games but still is good enough and improve in all areas through draft and free agency? Then go get yourself a quarterback next offseason. Or do you all see value in giving up four to five picks for a top-tier quarterback with a young team and even though improvement is needed elsewhere? Thanks. Uh... I believe the whole Russell Wilson, Aaron Rodgers thing when it happens, for starters, uh, this team is just not a Russell Wilson or Aaron Rodgers away from making a serious run at the playoffs. Uh, those both those guys once again are under contract. It you know it you just don't push the Madden button and get Russell Wilson and Aaron Rodgers to the Steelers. There's going to be market for both those guys if indeed the teams they are on uh, deem that they are tradable there. So I'm not going to say impossible, but I will be surprised if either one of those two arrive. And no, I would not give up a lot of draft picks to do it uh, because there are a lot of holes on this team. Uh, Where are you at on Ben right now? In what regard? In terms of the problem? All of it. All of it. I mean, I don't think he's the problem. I mean, obviously, he's been playing well and and, and certainly low on the list of issues. He certainly had his, his poor games and struggles this season. But, again, the overall issues of why this team is 6-6-1, six, six and one, he's pretty low right now. Um, oh, you mean like I said at the beginning of the season, right? That Ben Roethlisberger is way on the low, li- low on the list of yeah. problems that this team has got that, that this team will have that uh, he's around number three or number four. And I think he's proven that to be true. And really thank God you had him for that game last night, because once again, you're not going to come back in that game right. if you don't have him. So I guess the question becomes is if Ben wanted to come back uh, for, for another year at $14 million, would, uh, would you take Ben back at $14 million? Yes. I, I mean, I, I, I guess if he wants to get beat up another year, th- that's fine. The team still isn't going to go to the Super Bowl, right? No, probably not. But, I mean, they're not going to go to the Super Bowl with, you know, Tyrod Taylor, Marcus Mariota, or any of those guys. I mean, I think, you know, if Ben wants to come back, then I'm certainly very much open to that fact. Um, yeah, I mean, with Rodgers and Wilson, the odds of that seem very, very low for a variety of reasons. Um, but I will say this, you know, I understand, you know, if you, if you get those guys, the other issues still exist, but can you imagine this team without a, a very competent, capable quarterback? They have uh, Rudolph or Mariota trying to play with all the other other issues on this team. It's going to be even worse next season. So I don't know. If you can get, if you can get a Rodgers or a Wilson, especially Rodgers, like it's hard to turn that down just because they do mask a lot of problems and they really, you know, allow you to be competitive and, and try to make runs. I, I, I still don't think I, – I don't, I don't care who the quarterback is at this point. If you don't throw money in free agency, you're not going to solve it through the draft, mm. uh, all of it. Uh, so, and then obviously if you have to go out and get Wilson or Aaron Rodgers, that's going to take away from your, whatever draft capital you have left. Uh, so unless you want to change the whole approach, uh, to this off season here and, and every year we hear Kevin Gore said, everything we do is for to win now and to keep the future in mind. Uh, uh, I mean, if you go, if you, if you honestly believe that, then and and then if you want Ben to come back, then you have to throw a lot of stuff around him because you've got to get that offensive line better and you've got to get that defense better that, that, that that's going to be full of holes uh, next year. So uh, once again, yeah, people asking the question about Ben, the question's not about Ben. You, you, you know, Ben... Ben is Ben is way down the list of things that need to be fixed for this team to be to to, to compete for a Super Bowl in 2022. In my opinion. if he wants to come back for you know here, you're not going to get the guy. I don't think that you want in the draft. Okay, right? Yeah, I think it's unlikely. At least no one that's going to help you uh, next year. Even if you do get a guy that you like, he's not starting week one. And if you if you throw your dart at uh, uh, Rudolph Mariota. What have you? It, once again, if you don't spend the money in free agency, it don't matter. It's not going to matter, I don't think. 
Uh, does Ben want to go go through another year of this? I mean, well, it's all about how his body feels to me. And after last night, I don't think his body feels too good. So that that's always been the. It's not an issue of like competitive desire or drive. It just can you physically get to a place where you feel like you can get through an entire 17 game season again. And my feeling is that he's probably not not in that camp. But we'll see. I mean, I'm not I'm not closing that door entirely. Uh, let's see here. Next email. Uh, consistency, inconsistency from, looks like Eloise Marks. Consistency, inconsistency, I think sums up this weird season very well. We've seen Tomlin's best regular season win uh, against the Bills and worst uh, loss against the uh, Bengals. First half and second half performance disparities, Presley Harvin the third, etc. The Steelers are often lauded for their consistency as an organization, usually usually referencing head coach tenor, tenures, uh, Rooney's patience, etc. To use a Dave Bryan phrase, however, comma, at the same time, we're just three years removed from seeing the number one defense in the NFL to now seeing something out of a Wiley Coyote mm-hmm. movie on the field. Uh, we all laughed at Jacksonville for dismantling their 2017 Saxonville defense in a hurry. Yet here we are. Uh, question is, what good is all that consistency in the coaching staff if we can't retain key players uh, to sustain an acceptable level of play. Yes, sustained success is hard. Yes, free agency makes it difficult to retain everybody. But for an organization who prides itself in being steeped in tradition and consistency, you'd think they could certainly do a little better. And no, do not fire Tomlin. Sorry, dear angry Friday morning uh, readers. Uh, once again, I think it goes back to what Alex and I said prior to last season is that the writing was on the wall last season that that defense was going to, uh, in, in the form that it was, was going to be the last shot, at least for a couple of years at this team, potentially winning a Super Bowl, And that includes the offensive makeup and, and all that, uh, uh, Pouncey, DeCastro, you know, all, all, all those guys there. Um, uh, the Steelers pride themselves in building through the draft, so thus it hurts tremendously when you don't have guys like Edmonds and Bush uh, hitting, and you have guys in their second your second year players this year not playing all that great right now uh, in, in 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 Claypool and you know a few of the others there, uh, and if you don't make you know don't. If you if you only go bargain hunting and free agency and 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 then that's what you have happen. That's why they are. That's why this organization is where they are right now, and that's why there's so many questions right now about what is this team even going to be in 2022. Yeah, I mean it's, it's certainly a fair criticism and critique. Obviously, this off season was pretty unique with the cap crunch and some of the injuries and some of that unexpected stuff of the overall plan but yeah i mean the bottom line is this team hasn't won a playoff game in going on what five years now you haven't you know only won too long yeah, only won three since their last super bowl appearance and i wrote that that was the first thing i wrote about when they lost to the browns in the wildcard game last year was how disappointing this last decade has been because there has been so much talent in you know 10 years of ben's career and some really good years from him and some really good teams overall and just overall not much to show for it and, and it seems like they're going to go down this path again with showing nothing from from ben's likely presumably you know final season so there is obvious disappointment there and i'm not going to disagree with anyone who is uh disappointed the way that the, the reader is there now look you go back to the couple of times the last couple of times this team's been in the super bowl or been deep in it you know uh it, it's usually because they have a good defense and you go back and look at some of the the you know the the the, the numbers of ben roethlisberger in those seasons they weren't great right you know, especially from a adjusted from net yards per passing attempt number there. So, uh, but how, you know, they they also had a little bit. You know, obviously some of those offensive lines weren't weren't great. What was the what was the uh, uh, two thousand and eight? Yeah, with season, Stapleton was and uh, Hartwig and and those guys. 
but Ben also wasn't the same Ben either. He right. was still able to make plays and, 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 and kind of circumvent around that stuff. So now you're in a position where you absolutely have to have a, a top tier line mm-hmm. and you and you have to have one of the league's top five or six defenses. And how how much is it going to take for this team to get a put a defense back on the field that you know can be a top seven defense? Yeah, there's the, the, those core pieces exist. You know, at every level, Hayward to Watt to Fitzpatrick. You have to spend money um, to do it right away if you're going to do it. To do it right away, I think. Yeah, sure. But that's not the end. Right? I mean, yeah, I, I, to do it in an instant, in a, in a couple of months, then then yeah, you would have to spend money because the draft is, is development and taking time and, and, and taking a couple of years. Uh, I, there's way too many emails in here, folks. We'll have to get to some of these on, on, on Monday. We're up against it here. We got a lot of work to do on this, uh, Friday as well, too. So, uh, uh, we'll, we'll try to hit some more of these emails, uh, on the Monday show. So, uh, Alex, anything else? No. Yeah. We'll get the more emails Monday. Cause obviously there's no game to recap on Monday. So we'll have kind of an extended time to, to, to talk about some of the emails and things like that more. So we'll, uh, we'll come back Monday and I believe we'll have a live stream on Monday as well. So that'll be fun. All right. Uh, in the meantime, you can follow me on the Twitter machine at Steeders Depot. Follow Alex on Twitter at Alex underscore Kazar. Follow the show at Terrible Podcast. Email the show, the Terrible Podcast at gmail.com. If you like what we do and you want to donate to the cause, go to SteedersDepot.com. Hit the donate button, up right navigational bar. Also, if you like an ad free version, go to SteedersDepot.com and hit the ad free button, up right navigational bar for $25. Uh, you can get that version of the site as well, too. So, uh, Alex and I will be back on Monday having watched uh, scrub the all 22 very very well by then and we'll recap this continue to recap this uh, Thursday night game and talk more emails and look over the state of the AFC after all that has transpired over the weekend there so uh, in the meantime as always thanks for listening to the terrible podcast with Dave and Alex Okay, uh, we're about, what, almost two hours in this. Yeah, it's like hour 50. All right, I'll get this uh, chopped up here. All right. All right. And what's Josh Josh doing? Uh, I think he was just driving back from Hershey and was just said he was going to be in the car for a couple hours. Okay. But uh, there's no player interviews, I assume, today, right? Nothing coming? I don't I, I, I don't think there's imagine. anything coming. Cool, cool. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm going to try to get something from, from Charlie Batch. I haven't looked through it yet, but uh, I'll find something and write up uh, something from, from there. All right, the only thing that caught my eye is just co- comments about yeah. Ben, you okay. know, uh, uh, other than that there. All right, uh, have, have a blessed, blessed day. All right, bye. Right.